Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is David O. And you're in the know with David O. Uh, here on WWDB 860 AM. Okay. Um, we are on live and uh, kind of struggling with my uh, headset here. So uh, I think I'm going to just take it off and uh, start just uh, chatting with you. But listen, uh, we have a wonderful show to, for you today, and it's really all about getting funds. Yeah, people need money, especially in today's environment. And there are so many great organizations out there, nonprofits, folks doing wonderful things in our community. And uh, one of the things they always need is support, whether it comes in the form of resources or cash. And who couldn't help but use some cash? Um, so. We have five wonderful guests to tell you about their uh, programs as well as their resources and how you can access them. We have Becky Lynch from GlaxoSmithKline, Joe Divis from AT&T, Michael Cooper from Citizens Bank, Teresa Rogers from the Presser Foundation, and Diane Melly from IBM. Now listen, we are going to get right to them, but first let me thank my show sponsor, Feinerman Pain and Wellness. They do a fantastic job of helping people get back to work, get back to life. If you've been injured, if you've been hurt, hurt in the workplace, check out Weinerman Pain and Wellness. Well, WeinermanPainAndWellness.com uh, is their website. And you can reach out to them by telephone, 215-988-9503. They're right a couple blocks away from City Hall at 100 South Broad Street. Um, and I thank them because, hey, listen, I wouldn't have this show without them and their support. If you recall, last week, uh, we were talking to Commissioner Al Schmidt. He's a Philadelphia Elections Commissioner. We're talking about the new congressional districts in Philadelphia, kind of the havoc that they're creating and what they're going to mean for uh, Philadelphia and that whole process. And then we uh, spoke with Nia Andrews, Miss Philadelphia 2017, looking back and looking ahead. And then we had, uh, uh, we played a clip, we got introduced to the PHL Live Center Stage Gospel Music winner 2017, that is Image the Voice, Image the Voice, D-A, the Voice, Image the Voice, Billy. Um, and, and I say that because if you want to check out past shows, first of all, uh, you can do that at uh, www.wwdbam.com. Or you can go to YouTube and uh, just uh, type in In the Know with David O and there'll be some video and things like that. Um, well, let's get uh, to uh, talk to our guests. There's five of them here. And um, they, they represent uh, some of these uh, wonderful uh, corporations and uh, nonprofit uh, foundations that provide resources um, to folks out there doing good things in our in our community. Um, let me start by introducing uh, Becky Lynch. Um, Becky, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. And now, uh, for, for, for people who don't know, GlaxoSmithKline, or GSK, is a pharmaceutical company with, the, with uh, one of its uh, uh, headquarters here in Philadelphia in the Naval Yard, is that right? That's right. So we're a global healthcare company. We have three major businesses in pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and consumer healthcare. We have about 15,000 employees in the United States. A great deal of them are here in greater Philadelphia. Uh, so mm. we have one of our global R&D hubs and the corporate office in the Navy Yard. Okay, fantastic. And so uh, GlaxoSmithKline, or GSK, has uh, a number of uh, charitable uh, programs, um, uh, but uh, from what I'm looking at, uh, basically they fall into charitable grants, impact awards and grants, opportunity scholarships, and science in the summer. Yep. Could you describe those for our uh, for our listeners? Yeah. So we we do a number of different philanthropic programs across the U.S. A lot of those dollars are spent here in Philadelphia. Um, our one of our largest programs is GSK Impact Awards. So that is a program that gives nonprofits who are working in community health forty thousand uh, dollars, small to mid-sized nonprofit organizations, and that application process opened yesterday. So oh, if folks okay. visit us.gsk.com and search for Impact Awards, mm -hmm. um, they can find the application information. We're going to have some conference calls at the end of the month for nonprofits who are interested in applying, and really we're looking for nonprofits who are making 
an enormous impact outside of the doctor's office to influence health outcomes, things like healthy eating, good uh, education, quality jobs. Um, so nonprofits were interested in that. That's one of our best programs for local nonprofits to get funds from GSK. And, and I understand that about 10 nonprofit organizations that operate in Bucks County, Chester County, Delaware County, Montgomery County, and or Philadelphia are really uh, eligible to be considered uh, for this particular award? That's right. So they have to be operating in one of the five um, counties, Philadelphia, um, and they have to have a annual gross revenue of $5 million or less. So we're really mm -hmm. looking for sort of small grassroots organizations. IMPACT is an acronym, so organizations that are innovative, measured, partnered, accountable, community-centered, and uh, transformative are the ones that we're looking for. A plus for you. <laughs> a plus. All right. Um, and uh, GSK is a big multinational uh, uh, corporation with a lot of resources. What other types of um, support do you uh, give to uh, folks in and around Philadelphia? So in addition to community health, we're also focused on STEM education, so really inspiring the next, next generation of scientists to work at our company and others. Um, and so our other biggest program is GSK Science in the Summer, which is run through the Franklin Institute. It is a four-day hands-on science camp that's free and offered at libraries across the, um, across the region. The, um, those registrations are going to open up in May, scienceofthesummer.com. Okay, um, right, summer's so coming around. It's right? coming up soon, and mm -hmm. parents and grandparents, caregivers who are interested in getting their kids into those programs that are free, again, um, free. Check should it sign out, up. Free, free. Come on. <laughs> uh, they fill up extremely quickly. So scienceofthesummer.com, take a look. May, those registrations were open. And it's, it's really just some fun uh, experiments. It's focused on the science of space this year, so it should oh, be should okay. be a really good time. So that's that's for parents less than nonprofits uh, oh to sign goodness. up for that. Sounds exciting. Now, now, Becky, could you tell everybody your exact job title and what it means to them? Uh, sure. So I'm Acting Director of U.S. Community Partnerships for GSK, so I oversee all of our U.S. philanthropy um, in, for the company. All right. So you're hearing from the woman in charge. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks listen, for having me. Well, listen, I got, a, I got a friend here. I've known Joe for a while, and I'm talking about Joseph Divis. He's with AT&T, and I've had the pleasure of standing next to him a couple of times when he handed out some checks. There's nothing, uh, let, let me tell you, nothing as thrilling and fun as seeing kids' face light up when there's a $15,000 check being handed <laughs> for their program in an underserved community. But you do a lot more than that. And, and so, Joe, why don't you tell us about AT&T and the kind of uh, funds and resources AT&T makes available in our region. Sure. Uh, thanks for the invitation, Councilman. It's oh, great to be here. And I, and, I, and I think you, one of the top, the one time I recollect uh, was the Coded by Kids. Oh, yeah. Um, when it was the, the birthday party yes. for Coded by Kids and Sylvester yeah. Mobley, and sure. you were there, and it was, you're right, it, it's uh, it, it's a lot of fun. But listen, the other time we were at a Latino youth music. Yes. You remember that? Taliera Puerto Rican. Yes, Taliera Puerto Rican. Yes. Yeah, we, I tell you, we've, uh, we've yeah. gone back a little bit. We're rock also, and roll. We also gave a, a check a couple of times to the U.S. Army Green Berets, and thank you for that. Well, the, the veterans uh, are an important uh, constituency of ours in, in our philanthropic efforts. So, uh, okay, veterans, you heard it. at and t hit them up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but, but no, um, uh, hopefully uh, everyone in your audience knows, uh, has heard of at and uh, and what we do in, in uh, connecting people and providing entertainment, uh, whether through your wireless service, whether through DirecTV, we also have a significant business uh, service um, uh, component, so um, it's really all about connectivity, and, and we know how important connectivity is in this day yes. and age, and, and what we try to do and invest in, in, in our networks and make sure that, that people have their, their connectivity, their entertainment, their, their business, and everything that uh, mm -hmm. we can do to support that. On, uh, for purposes of, of today's show, um, uh, AT&T, uh, we, we do our philanthropy uh, by and large through what we call uh, the Aspire Initiative, yes. which uh, through, uh, since 2008, AT&T has committed over $400 million wow. to programs, services, research, um, and, and community-based organizations that are working in primarily the high school success, college readiness, youth, youth STEM initiative space, uh, which is, is really quite important, not just, but it is important for our, our company and what we're doing and how the world is changing, 
the skill set demands are changing and the STEM or STEAM actually right. if you look at you add arts into the STEM area right. uh, is quite important but we also see that it's it's a commitment uh, we make not just to our company and its growth but to the, to the, com to the country right. and how can we be a part of the solution in making sure that uh, young people coming out of high school first of all are graduating Yes. Uh, which is, is an issue we have to continue to work on, um, but also coming out of high school with the skills, with the preparation, whether to go to college or whether to go into the workforce or some other type of training. So that's where we focus in, in this, in, in nationally, but also here with, with uh, the, the element of, of philanthropy that I get to be involved in, as we've done before. It's in that space where you're really touching those high school students or the young college students and really getting them ready to contribute and be skilled into the into the 21st century. Yeah, I, I see that basically the program areas at AT&T is focused on is, as you said, education, mm -hmm. community support and safety, health and human services, and arts, media, and culture. And AT&T does it through basically two mechanisms. One is AT&T Contributions Council, and the second is AT&T Foundation. Right, right. And the foundation is what uh, runs our Aspire initiative, mm -hmm. and that's really where um, uh, much of what we do in the philanthropic space uh, is uh, is enabled. And um, to your point, uh, like in the safety space, or it can wait campaign mm -hmm. about no texting while driving or no doing any of that electronic stuff while you're driving. Right. Those those are the kind of things that we do um, as as part of our citizenship and responsibility and sustainability. Uh, initiatives um, that, that come under this this big umbrella of right. what are we doing to support our, our community. But I think for purposes of, of your show, it really is, I think, the education uh, sector, the education lane that um, I get the most, uh, first of all, most enjoyment out of, but also that, that that's where we can, can really work with organizations in the community um, that are, that are, that are doing the hard work, doing the blocking and tackling of, of providing these types of services and the immersion into pro projects that are giving them the skills. So uh, we'll talk about that probably a little more as we go on. Yeah, Joe, listen, for folks who are just remembering, like their eardrums are still ringing, they heard $400 million, and where did they go to tap into this money? <laughs> well, I, I, let, let, me just, let me just back up. <laughs> let me just back up. Yeah, um, the, the $400 million is not uh, in, in uh -oh. my... Oh, no, no. Yeah, just give us yeah, the... Yeah. Just give us the, the, the where this you is, go? Yeah. No, um, that's that's our commitment yes. that, that we've made since 2008. And, and, and listen, uh, it's a big amount of money. It is, it, it is. And it's it's going that to, all you want. It's still huge. And it's, it's going to, to a number of different things, mm -hmm. um, such as that uh, we, we're... Running the Diplomas Now program out of Frankfurt High School, which yes. involves the Johns Hopkins uh, communities and schools and city year that are providing uh, intensive services to the ninth graders, so they can identify those kids that may be uh, at risk of dropping out. Work with them so they can get on that path towards graduation. And then we work with small organizations like the Monkey and the Elephant, which I met through your youth nonprofit oh, yeah, symposium, yeah, which is a great event. Yeah. And they're a small coffee shop on Girard Avenue. Mm -hmm. Um, that are working with youth that have aged out of the foster yes. care program yeah, and need that kind of guidance and, and work, um, workforce development kind right. of thing. They've never really maybe held a job and getting those kind of skills. So um, you can look, people can look at the uh, uh, AT&T, let me get this, uh, AT&T.com backslash Aspire. Aspire um, with Aspire an A. With right. an a um, uh, I will give my email address no, no, at the risk okay. of, uh, but but you know what? Yeah. I tell you what, it's better to have more opportunity than less. Obviously, yes. we can't, we never have enough funds to to support all of the right. um, great programs and organizations. But it's always great to have folks that are that you know about and can sure. talk about and maybe refer or do some other things. So that's uh, that would be Joseph Divis at att.com. All right. Well, listen. I mean, I think everybody appreciates the opportunity to further their work through the uh, contributions and support of companies like AT&T. So thank you for sharing uh, with us. I'm going to turn over to uh, uh, Teresa Rogers because her foundation, the Presser Foundation, they do something very specific and it's all about music, music education, 
music philanthropy. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. And so could you tell our listeners um, why music and what you do in music? Yeah, the Presser Foundation was uh, really started by Theodore Presser, who made the bulk of his fortune in music publishing. He published a magazine for music teachers really around the world mm. called The Etude, and then he uh, published Sheet Music. Oh, okay. He passed away in 1925, and the bulk of his estate went to the foundation, which was formally incorporated in uh, 1939. So today we have um, about $75 million in assets. We gift out about $3.3 million um, to music organizations, and we define music organizations as uh, music education, so community music schools, after-school music programs, um, also undergraduate and graduate schools of music. Um, we gift to music presenting organizations, so organizations like the Kimmel Center for the Performing Arts or the Mann Center, um, and then lastly, music performing organizations. So these are, you know, everything from very large orchestras like the Philadelphia Orchestra to, orchestra to small ensemble groups. And uh, it says here, and I don't know if this is a thing that Presser Foundation mm -hmm. continues to do, but I thought it was interesting, uh, administer financial support yes. to retired or disabled music teachers That's in need. That's right, yes. Wow. So wow. when Mr. Presser was alive, uh, a very big part of his philanthropy mm -hmm. was um, supporting retired music teachers. Okay, everybody, if you know a retired music <laughs> teacher or something, you, know, you better listen up, because so, I've never heard this before. <laughs> so he, um, he felt like those were the people who bought his magazine, The Etude, mm -hmm. okay. and he felt indebted to them. Uh, as a community and knowing that they were not really able to make that much money yes. uh, in, their, in their profession, he actually built a home in Germantown um, for retired music teachers. Now this is prior to Social Security. Right, right, yes, um, yes. And you know, healthcare and the like. Um, so the, his intention was that these music teachers can come and sort of live out their days at the presser home. Um, with change in, you know, support services and um, those kinds of things and employment in general, um, the program ass assisting, providing this assistance to music teachers has evolved. So we provide um, a stipend mm -hmm. um, to retired music teachers of significance who have right. been referred to us through a, another institution. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. How, how do people get in touch with the Presser Foundation in order to yeah. tap into some of these opportunities of support? Yeah, the best way is through our website, which is www.presserfoundation.org. Um, all of our information is listed on there, our five grant making programs, their deadlines um, for proposal submission. We do use an online grant application platform, um, so uh, all the information um, to learn about our programs, our guidelines, and then to access the application uh, is, is, can be found on the website. Yeah, I'm looking at a list of some of the 2018 Grantees. Yes. And I see a number of very familiar names. In fact, all of them. I mean, Play on Philly. Yeah. Great program. Great. We had them on a radio show. Yes. The Philadelphia Gay Men's Choir. Yes. Uh, Philadelphia Clef Club. Mm -hmm. Love those guys. Yep. And um, the Chamber Orchestra of Philadelphia. Correct. And uh, Artistas y Musicos Latinos Americanos. Alma. Yes. Oh, wonderful. And, you know, they got some of that $3.3 .3 million and. Uh, you know, they do fantastic work, and so this is the type of thing that you do. It is. Those organizations, just we just announced uh, last week our Advancement of Music grantees, so mm, those organizations okay. are amongst those uh, grantees. Um, and that's really critical because we provide general operating support yes. um, for your listeners, um, you know, uh, who 
would like to find out about general operating support because it's highly coveted. Yes. Um, you know, we do an evaluation of the organization on three levels. We look at their leadership, their finances, and the quality of their music programming. And if we feel confident in those three buckets, then we're going to give discretion to the leadership um, to use our grant funds how they see fit. Okay, and, and a final thing, because it says here, and again, times have changed, but um, erecting suitable buildings yes. for music. Do you still do that? We still do that. Philadelphia Music yes. Hall of Fame and Education. <laughs> I see it now. Yes, <laughs> so we, um, that makes up uh, about $700,000 of that $3.3 million that goes out the door. Okay. Um, and we support large renovation or new building projects mainly at schools of music and at um, venues that right. present um, mm -hmm. music as okay. a focus. Wow, fantastic. So listen everybody, we are not even done yet. So stay tuned because we're gonna talk to IBM Citizens Bank when we come back from this commercial break. You are listening to that for the year. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Uh, thank you for joining me and staying with me on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. You know, we were, listen, we're talking about funders and, and folks who, uh, whether they're a corporation or foundation, um, give money and provide support and resources to people doing good, such as yourselves or someone you know. And, and maybe someone who could really use the help of uh, an organization, a nonprofit. Um, and so we have five funders with us today representing GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, AT&T, Citizens Bank, the Presser Foundation, and IBM. And can you get a sense of you know, what giving is all about to these folks and, and apply it to some others? And also figure out if they have a program that suits your needs. Well, listen, we talked to, um, uh, uh, Becky uh, Lynch from GlaxoSmithKline, uh, Joe Divis uh, from AT&T, and Teresa Rogers from the Presser Foundation uh, just before commercial break. And I say that because you can always check them out uh, probably this evening at www.wwdam.com. Just go to In the Know with David O and, and today's show will pop up. Or you can go to YouTube um, and uh, just type in In the Know with David O. Um, so, so let me continue. I'm going to talk to uh, Mike Cooper, who's with Citizens Bank. Uh, Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Councilman. Appreciate it. Um, tell us about Citizens Bank and their philanthropy. Sure. Well, uh, just for by, by way of background, Citizens Bank is one of the oldest financial institutions in the country. Uh, we are headquartered in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, but we own the and bought into the former Mellon franchise. Yes. So longtime Philadelphians will remember the Mellon franchise and before that PSFS. We are Citizens Bank, and so while we're uh, the 12th largest bank in the country, we've only been in the Philadelphia area since 2001. Uh, you may remember uh, the unveiling of Citizens Bank Park, our premier sponsorship, oh, uh, throughout is which something we're very proud of. Um, and throughout our footprint, we really try to focus our philanthropic activities on three main issues, and I can mm -hmm. talk very briefly about each one of those. Yes. Uh, the first is financial literacy. Obviously, we're a bank, and uh, as a bank, we uh, inherently believe that the success of our companies uh, are, is directly uh, tied to the success of our communities. And if people understand how to use money, how to be smart about their money, uh, how to save, uh, and also how to dig themselves out of credit holes, uh, they will be better consumers, and of course that will be better for our communities, which will be better for business. Uh, and so we focus a lot of our time and attention on financial literacy, and that comes in the form of training. Uh, we have uh, our colleagues going out into communities all throughout the region, uh, but next month with the School District of Philadelphia, providing free seminars for uh, community members, entrepreneurs, small business owners, uh, to talk about credit, uh, to talk about saving and debiting, and get them some help. Uh, about the basics of how to be a better banker. Yes, we're talking about folks with a lot of expertise going out in the community for free, really kind of knowing and understanding the community. And uh, I know that uh, last year, uh, uh, Citizens Bank uh, donated about 114,000 hours of volunteer services across our uh, region here. It was actually across our entire footprint, but it, it was, um, you know, but in addition to that, we also donated $225,000 wow. of general contributions oh, to fantastic. organizations that provide this service on a free yes. basis. And so if you're 
an individual out there, no matter what kind of circumstance you're in, how old you are, what you do for a living, how much money you have, uh, there are always uh, there's always inherent value in sitting down and talking with somebody about how you can be smarter with money to protect yourself, to protect your family, and also uh, position you to reach your full potential. Yeah, so I got the money part because after all, you are a bank, and then you talked about strengthening communities. Uh, you know, um, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the literature, it says through economic development, job training, small business development, affordable housing, and neighborhood revitalization. And the third thing is fighting hunger and reducing food insecurity. Why, Why does Citizens Bank focus on those uh, issues? Well, for us, you know, the strengthening communities really in this region is mostly about workforce development. Uh, we realize uh, that there is the great divide between employers who are looking for trained uh, employees who can uh, jump into 21st century jobs and have the skills and training they need to succeed. And then we also realize that there are a lot of people out there who don't get the education and the training they need in order to get that, but are eagerly seeking job opportunities that want to work hard, that want to build lifelong careers in sustainable industries. Uh, and so there needs to be somebody bringing both sides together. And so we see the workforce development issue as really the great uniter between business, between communities, between Republicans, between Democrats. It's something everybody universally agrees is needed in order to push inclusive growth forward. So we focus our philanthropic and volunteering efforts on best-in-class programs throughout our region that really provide people with a pathway to a sustainable career with upward mobility. Hunger, of course, is obviously uh, one of the most prevalent issues in our region. Uh, you know, for uh, there's basically one in every seven people walking around uh, in the greater Philadelphia area are suffering from food insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very, very easy issue to take advantage of. For one dollar you donate to a lot of our food partners, will produce two meals for someone in need. Mm -hmm. And so as bankers, we can appreciate the return on value uh, that we are uh, working with our food bank partners yes. on. Um, and so as part of that, we feel it's our inherent duty to fund uh, organizations that are food banks, food pantries, we're providing direct service food meals to the hunger, uh, to those suffering from hunger insecurity. Mm, okay, very good. And listen, anytime you bring Republicans and Democrats together in this environment, <laughs> you're doing something that everybody can agree on. Exactly. So, so could you tell me, what is the difference um, between contributions and sponsorships? Now, re the reason I tell you that is is because in former years, I'd say, hey, we need a contribution. They're like, oh, we're all out. And then, then later they'd be like, oh, should ask for a sponsorship. I'm like, I thought I was asking for the same thing. Oh, no, no, it's not the same thing. So listen, folks, there are two different piles of money, if not four or five. And so sometimes you have to know the right thing to ask for with a entity as large as, for example, you know, Citizens Bank. Sure, that's a good question. It's a question that I answer quite often. So contributions are really charitable gift gifts uh, that go towards nonprofits providing direct service. Um, so that could come in the form of a job training program or uh, to, uh, for a food bank, uh, buying more food uh, from suppliers or local mm -hmm. farms. Um, that could also take the form of, you know, adding more staff capability to provide more uh, training uh, for financial literacy uh, opportunities. A, a sponsorship is really a direct targeted opportunity where we're being asked to provide maybe a sponsorship for a ticket and table for a gala dinner or some sort of fundraiser where there's a little bit of advanced promotion. Um, and uh, by sponsoring that, it's a little bit of a different mechanism uh, that we use internally to fund that, and kind we have a different application. A little bit under like advertising, goodwill, that type of thing. Exactly. So you know, think about contributions as just general charitable foundation gifts, and then right. sponsorships as more uh, you know getting general visibility through the bank through a charitable support of a table, uh, right. a fundraiser, or something like that. Listen, for, for you folks listening, it might not make any difference to you, but for example, what he's saying is you might ask for some money and they'll give it to you, or they might be out of money, but, but if they could get a table, you get the same money, and then you just put a little thing that says AT&T's table, and you've got your money, or you could put a banner up, or you could charge them for a banner or something like that, but it is uh, kind of showing the goodwill of, uh, I said AT&T, but any IBM or any of these folks, uh, you know, if it's a kind of a sponsorship, but Citizens Bank, and so... You might say, hey, listen, we need uh, this amount of money for this program, but like, we don't have any. And then you might be, oh, hey, by the way, would you be our prime sponsor for our uh, fall gala fundraiser? They're like, oh, yeah, okay. And you'll get uh, a larger amount of money being the prime sponsor. So you've got to check out these things with the, uh, these folks who are ready to give um, support to you. And that's an important distinction. You know, I will say that you know, we're more keen on the charitable contributions. We really want our money to be hitting the street. And what we want are to see best-in-class programs that are providing direct service to greater Philadelphians 
uh, who are either suffering from food insecurity, uh, financial literacy instability, or uh, workforce development training issues. Um, with sponsorships, there really needs to be a little bit more of a tie to our business. You know, we're a bank, uh, and we're also a foundation, and so, but we're a bank first. And right. so, as part of that, it has to have some correlation to what we do. And so, uh, for, for listeners on the phone, I would really consider how you may align with Citizens Bank, uh, whether you're a customer, whether you're working with uh, the bank in some other way, uh, before you look at a sponsorship, but really look at the charitable giving contributions, uh, because that's really where we do the most good uh, on our philanthropy. Okay, fantastic. Now, 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 a question I forgot to ask, of course. Uh, 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 Joe and um, uh, and Teresa is, and I'll ask them later. But could you give your job title and what that means to our listeners? Sure, I am senior vice president and regional director of public affairs for the Mid States region, and that's the Mid Atlantic and the Midwest. Mid States sounds a little bit better. Okay, another heavy hitter here. All right, fantastic. And so now we're going to turn to Diane Melly. She is with IBM. And uh, of course, everybody's heard of IBM. I hope so. uh, yeah, I would think so. And, and so, such a large uh, corporate, uh, um, you know, a company. And, and what kind of programs that does IBM? Uh, what do that? What do they offer? So first of all, uh, David, thank you so much for having us. Oh, and I hope that here. people have heard of IBM. Yeah, I sure um, think so. We are a company that's been around for a while, mm -hmm. uh, 107 years. Uh, and I think the thing that's important uh, talking to the Philadelphia audience, and I am a native Philadelphian, um, is that IBM is a global company, as much like AT&T and, and GSK. We have 400,000 people around the world in 170 countries. Mm -hmm. But I think what's important here is that we are a global company that acts locally. Mm -hmm. And so we have a vast portfolio of citizenship activities and grants that we make that we really want to make sure uh, touch the communities where our people live and work and where our customers live and work. So um, I can highlight for you today just a handful, and then people can uh, follow up by visiting our, our, our website, and I'll give you the URL for that in a moment. So. What we look like in Pennsylvania is quite interesting because you often hear this, uh, companies are not headquartered here any longer, that kind of thing. We have very robust activities for our citizenship, even though we are not headquartered here. So we have several thousand employees. Uh, the three programs that I wanted to highlight for you today um, are our impact grants, our community grants, and our matching grants. Okay, uh, let me interrupt for a second because I just want to say this. Listen, impact awards? Right. That is GSK. GSK yep. impact grants. That is IBM. IBM. So they both have impact. But one's an impact grant, one's an impact award. Okay. So I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh no, that's great. And the way we uh, approach our philanthropy and our corporate giving is to 